heyrist í mér. Heyrði, rosa gaman að fá að vera með ykkur hérna í morgun skárið og bara gaman að sjá hvað margir koma og, og hafa áhuga á þessu efni. Ég ætla nú ekki svo sem að fara ofan í tæknilega sem að hérna, ég sýnist vera miklu hæfara fólk til að fara yfir það og ég ætla svona að segja ykkur aðeins frá því hvernig við hjá Microsoft erum að sjá svolítið framtíðina og ég er mjög gaman að því að segja ykkur svona leiðu kannski að skyggnast inn í þann raunveruleika sem að við erum að horfa í og hvernig raunveruleikinn er svolítið að breytast og ég vona að uh, þetta svona kannski varpi svolítið uh, ljósi á hverju þetta efni sem við erum að fara yfir hérna í dag bæði það sem að parallels er að fara í gegnum og Guðmundur Pétur ætlar að sýna ykkur líka og, og af hverju stýring tækja og, og af hverju það skiptir máli að nótendur fái að nota þau tæki sem að þeir telja að hjálpi sér hvað mest. Ég ætla kannski byrja aðeins að segja ykkur smá reynstusögu. Ég sem sagt var, já bara, hérna, ég var ansi svona, við skulum segja, tilfinningasamur yfir því að dótti mín vildi endilega fá sér tölvu þegar hún var, þegar hún fæmdist. Þetta er fyrir nokkru mánu síðan og ég sagði við hana, veistu það, þetta bara kemur ekki til greina. Ég nenni ekki að taka þátt í þessu. Ég kann ekki á þetta og ég get ekki hjálpað þér og svo ætlar að fara að byrja mig um að gera þetta og gera hitt. Það er ekki sjens í nenna standi í þessu. Og þið sjáum mig alveg fyrir ykkur svona að taka þessa ræðu. Nema að hérna, hún fæst í makk og, og ég verð að segja það, þetta bara hreinlega svín virkaði þetta tæki. Það vel að næsta tölva sem ég fekk með það var makk. Og það sem að bjargaði mér í lífinu þá var einmitt parallels og að ég gat nota Windows á makk. Þannig að ég er mjög hérna ánægður viðskiptavinnu parallels hjálpaði mér mjög mikið og bara virkilega gaman að fá, fá þau til að tala hérna í dag. Aðeins að segja ykkur frá því hvað er búið að vera að gerast hjá Microsoft. Uh, þetta er kannski sá raunveruleiki sem að við bjuggum og áttuðum okkur á, já ég getum sagt svona með pínlit ötri tusku í andlitið, að uh, heimurinn var að breytast aðeins hraðar fyrir utan dyrnar hérna okkur, heldur en að við áttuðum okkur á inn í stofu. Þar sátum við upp í sófa með lappinnar upp á skemil og höfðum það bara rosalega gott og fannst æðislegt hvað við varum æðisleg. En heimurinn er búin að gjörbreytast á ansi stuttum tíma. Og þessi raunveruleiki sem hérna er líst, hann er raunni ágætur og raunni má segja að hann nær aftur um svona fjögur ár þegar að Jack Wells kom í mynd á svið hjá meðal allt stjórnunda Microsoft og sagði mér þessa setningu á náttúrum af þeim tíma þegar að Asjúr og öll þessi skýjabæðing var að fara að eiga sér stað. En það sem við áttuðum okkur kannski ekki á á þessum tíma var það nýja kynnslóð, hún var með algjörlega nýja sín. Hún uh, í fyrsta lagi hugsar hlutina með allt verum hætti, hún ímynda sér það og, og vill í rauninni vera gríðalega mobile, mobile í þessum skilviki þýðir ekki það endilega að vera með mobile hann síma, það er að segja símtæki, Heldur bara hreinlega það að geta fært sig til og unnið bara raunni nákvæmlega þar sem að þeim hentar. Og þessi heimur er meira sér líka, kona mín spurði mig bara í fyrir mér, hérna, ég skil ekki alveg, ég er nokkuð til að fylgjast með kennundi sem verður á föstu dæðinu, ég get ekki verið á staðnum, ég meina geta ekki hlusta á þetta Skype. Jú, auðvitað getur hlusta á þetta Skype. Það er að segja við öll hérna inni erum farin að gera ráð fyrir því að geta verið mjög mobile. Og þessi sín er að ná til okkar þó hún er kannski ekki hluta þeim raunveruleika sem við bjuggum við til að byrja með. Það sem að þessi heimur er líka í rauninni vanur er þessi samvinn, þessi collaboration, að geta unnið saman og við viljum í rauninni geta tekið þátt í því að móta þennan heim og fyrir utan það líka eins og þið þekkið og ég þekki líka sjálfur, það er rosalega erfitt fyrir mig að knýja á um það eða byrja ykkur um að gera hluti sem þið hafið bara eiginlega engan áhuga á að gera. Þetta er einhvern veginn svona raunveruleikinn sem að ég ætla á hana man alveg eftir. Mér var sagt að fara að stimpla minn í bakvörð á sínu tíma. Það var sagt, heyrðu, þú bara lærir þetta einhverja tölu, þú stimplar alltaf inn þegar þú mætir á mótnana. Þetta er einhver heimur sem að ungt fólk í dag bara skilur ekki. Það tekur ekki þátt í þessu. Það segir bara, hei, ég vil bara fá þetta í síman minn og þetta bara verður að virka þannig. Þessi heimur er að, er að taka yfir og þegar við áttum okkur líka á því og setum þetta í samingi við það, að það er að fara að eiga sér stað þessi fjórða iðnbylding í heiminum í dag, það er að segja, eins og menn trúa núna, að þetta svo kallaða cyber physical system sem þýðir það að tölvu eru farið að hjálpa okkur miklu, miklu meira heldur að kannski hvorki að taka yfir eitthvað því sem við erum að gera eða í rauninni að 
við erum alveg klárlega við erum að fara einfalda mjög mörg störf með aðstóð tölvutækni og alls konar tækja í okkar umhverfi og þetta allt saman kemur til með að verða til þess að störfin okkar þau munu breytast mjög mikið og þessi fjórða innbylding sem að var rætt mjög mikið á The World Economic Forum í dag og sem frá þessu ári hún er raunin að tröldri í þöllu okkur í dag og við mætt oft að taka rísa stóran þátt í þessu og þessi heimur allir gera það að verkum að okkar svona samfélag og tækni er að breyta stróslega hratt að segja við erum að breyta stór því að vera að hugsa tækni út frá því að herðu bíttu gerum þetta bara hérna í þessu umhverfi eða bara hérna þetta er einhvern veginn allt saman að fljóta yfir við getum sagt þið eruð ekkit alveg þegar þið eruð að nota eitthvað tæki að tól er þetta endilega eitthvað sem er geymt á þessum hérna sörfur eða er þetta eitthvað þjónusta sem ég er að keyra þaðan eða hvernig í óskupunum kemur þetta sem sem hluti að þessu þá segjum við og ég er rosa stoltur af þessi framtíða sín fyrirtækisins sem er á ennsku en þetta þýðir í rauninni bara þetta hérna að við allum erum að hjálpa ykkur öllum og þá erum við líka að tala um þá sem að sjónskertir, við erum að tala um þá sem eru heitnarskertir, við erum að tala um þá sem að geta ekki hreyft sig með nákvæmlega sama hætti og kannski við öll hín það er að segja við þurfum að taka tilli til allra og við þurfum að geta hjálpa öllum í að ná frekar og betri árangur í að nýta upplýsingatækni. Mér er þetta frábær framtíða sín og hún í rauninni endurspeglast rosalega mikið í því að við segjum í ok, ef þetta á að vera hægt þarf fyrst að hugsa um það að vera móbæl og móbæl þýðir alls konar tæki og alls konar tól og því þurfum við að geta stýrt þeim með einhverjum ráðum og dáðum og svo þurfum við raunni líka af því að það eru allir móbæl af því að allir eru móbæl þá eru allir að fara að tengja sig út um allt og hvernig í óskupunum eigum við að geta tryggt það að öryggi sé með þeim hætti að við getum verið viss um það að til dæmis ákveðin starfsmaður sé að loka sig inn á einhver tölvukerfi og hafa aðganga gögnum hvernig getum við tryggt það? Það getum við gert í gegnum klátið, í gegnum skíð og þá er það nýjasta sem er að gerast akkurat núna það er það sem við erum að tala um þessi interconnected ambition og við byggjum það á þessum þremur mismunandi stóðum sem við byggjum okkar umhverfi á og við erum farin að tala núna um einhver sem heitir samtal sem þjónusta það er að segja við trúum því að þú er ekki að tala við tækin við teljum að það verði næsta skref við teljum að ef að þú getur tala við tæki og tæki getur skilið þig þá geti eitthvað gerst til dæmis bara því við skulum tala bara um samkemnsæðal okkar Amazon, það er mjög flott tæki frá þeim sem þú getur sagt á borðið þú getur sagt við það, heyrðu, kveiktu á upp þónistinni minni og svo förum við á alls konar flug með þetta og ímyndum okkur hvað þýðir þetta hvað þýðir þetta þá fyrir svona grunn sem við þurfum að ætlum að búa til þannig að conversation as a platform er nýjasta hugtaki í þessum heimi conversation as a platform er orðið eitthvað sem við ætlum að reyna að skilja átt okkur á og reyna að nýta okkur þannig að það sem ég hef gert er að geta labbað bensíndælu ég lít bara á bensíndæluna hún áttar sig á því að ég heiti heimannar, ég á reikning ég fyllan og þá bara byrjar dælan ég sting dælun í, væntalega nákvæmlega sama hátt ég hef gert og byrjar að fylla á bílum minn þetta er mjög spennandi framtíð og þegar við setjum þetta í samband við allar þessar þjónustur sem núna eru til í Asjúr og við til dæmis áttum okkur á því að allt þetta hérna, allar þessar þjónustu sem að núna er verið að bæði bara hreinlega að búa til og í rauninni koma á framfæri hvort sem er heita app þjónustur, einhvers konar machine learning, einhvers konar streaming analytics eða hvað það nú er, allt eru þetta þjónustur sem við getum sagt tengjast með einhverjum þessum hætti að ef við ætlum að komast inn í þessa framtíð sem að ég held að þið sjáu fyrir ykkur og ég er líka að reyna kannski að bæta við og krydda aðeins, ef við ætlum að komast þangað, þá þurfum við í rauninni að geta látið þetta tengjast allt saman saman, en þá er grundvöldla spurningi þessi, hvernig á ég sem einstaklingur að vera öruggur í þessu umhverfi, og það er kannski það sem við erum að fara að tala um hérna í dag, hvernig eigum við að geta gert það? Við sjáum líka þetta hér, Cortana Intelligence Suite, það er að segja, allt það sem er að gerast hérna vinstra megin, er að fara að fara að færast hérna yfir, hvort sem það eru 
big data stores eða hvort það er einhvers konar intelligence, information management eða hvað það nú er, við erum farin að reyna að pakka þessu saman fyrir ykkur. Við erum farin að reyna að búa til einhvers sem þetta er IoT suite. IoT suite þýðir ekkert annað en það, því ég ætlaði að fá okkur eitthvað ódýrt tæki, þá er þetta að tala við þetta tæki og tæki síðan heldur einhvern veginn áfram og gerir einhverja hluti fyrir ykkur. Þannig að ímyndið ykkur, hvað er þá er að hægt í þessum heimi? Það er ofsalega spennandi. Þetta er gríðalega spennandi heimur. Og ég ætla bara rétt aðeins að sýna ykkur myndband sem var frumsýnt á bild um daginn og einmitt fjallar um þetta sem heitir Conversation as a Platform. Það vonar þetta virki. Cortana, I want to dress like this. Can you help me find it? I like this one. Yes, please. Can I get it in a size six? Cool. Cortana, please give them my payment and shipping info. En að sjálfsögur er þetta ekki svona rosalega einfalt, en þetta byrjar allan hann allt saman hérna einhvers staðar sem einhvers konar hugmynd eða einhvers konar framtíðarsýn og ég ætla bara að skilja ykkur eftir þarna og við ætlum að fá að heyra meira um þessa tækni. Takk kjælega fyrir mig. Já, kem ég með þetta bak. Perfekt. Fantastic. So we'll take you through the technicalities that'll take 25-30 minutes and then I'm going to introduce our best customer in Iceland from City of Reykjavík, Haldol, um, to do a case study to demonstrate how Parallels has helped him in a real-life business solution environment. So with that, Pat, take it away. Morning everyone. Hope everyone's all right. Bit of a change in the weather from yesterday. We arrived and this is where we had to go. We had to go to the Blue Lagoon. We spent a, a good few hours there, didn't we? We had a great time. Um, and the experience of uh, coming to Iceland was absolutely, is, is, so far has been so fan fantastic. So you're lucky, you have a great country. Okay, so what I'm going to cover today, hopefully he says, there we go. We're going to cover the Parallels Max Solutions. And as Catherine went through um, earlier, well, just a minute ago, a lot of you heard of Parallels. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth in what Parallels pr um, provides you, um, the solutions that we have. We have three solu core solutions. The first one being the Parallels Desktop for Mac um, Business Edition. Just a bit of background. Parallels started out life about 10 years ago. And when Apple decided to embrace the Intel chipset, people decided, OK, I, I might want to run Windows on my Mac. And so Parallels saw the vision to actually develop a virtual solution that would run on OS X and allow you to run Windows alongside the OS X operating system. We've since developed that into a business enterprise uh, solution by adding in extra functionality. Originally, it was from the consumer kind of market. You could go into your local store. You could buy a, a copy of Parallels with, with your, along with your Apple. But now we've developed that and we've introduced some extra functionality with the business edition which allows you as an organization to manage those installations of your virtual environment within a, a single portal. Okay? We give you a single license key which allows you to manage those devices. So 
If you have, say, for example, 50 instances of uh, um, Parallels Desktop for Business Edition, you have one license key and you can manage those through the portal. And you can, you can do things like uh, provision the actual virtual environment, you can do mass deployments, you can blacklist the device if for some reason it's gone missing or it's retired. You re can reclaim the licenses, you can see how many licenses you have available to you. We also introduced then the Parallels Mac management for Microsoft SCCM. We saw a niche where Microsoft have a great product in SCCM for managing Windows. However, and I'm not saying this out of turn with Microsoft here, their Mac management through SCCM is not, it, it, it's, it's okay, um, but it's not really in depth. It's not the same on the same level as they manage Windows devices through SCCM. So we saw a niche there and we developed a, a solution, a plug into a, a SCCM to allow you to manage your Macs the same way as you would your Windows devices. And we use the infrastructure and the skill sets you have running SCCM to manage those Macs. We also introduced a, 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 a we, we acquired an, a, a, through an acquisition, we now have a Parallels Remote Application Server. I'm not going to talk about that today, I'm just going to mention it. It's all about um, application provisioning for um, your infrastructure um, on any device, any operating system. Uh, provisioning applications, virtual desktop environments, etc. Um, and we're, we're, we're very uh, enthusiastic about the product. Um, it competes with the other uh, solutions out there, but we, we feel we have a complete solution in one stop. Okay. okay, so introducing the desktop virtualization uh, solution. And it's allowing you we go on about running Windows on a Mac. We can actually provision other operating systems on the Mac as well. So if you have any applications that run a, an older version of OS X, you can provision that and you can run the older version of OS X on the, on, on the Mac as well. We can also provision Linux, to, um, Linux uh, virtual environments as well. And that's the, yeah, obviously the parallels for desktop uh, business edition and giving those uh, uh, Functionality that I mentioned earlier. So we have the unified activation key, so the license key. There's the portal, okay, so you can actually access the portal, you log into the portal, and you can have more than one administrator to that portal. So that will allow you um, in your organization to allow more than one administrator to actually manage that. We have what we call lockdown control. So these are things that allow you to lock down the virtual environment. So, for example, we can have full visibility of the virtual environment onto the uh, core OS X uh, operating system. So you can share files between the two. You can copy and paste. Or on the opposite side of that, you can lock it down so you do that the user does not have the ability to copy files and um, um, presentations between the two or share uh, environments as well. So things like uh, shared resources, we can lock those down. There's a mass deployment, so you can do one-to-many deployments. Um, there's the free upgrades to new versions. We run on a, the licensing model is a subscription model. So once all the time you're under subscription, you have access to um, the upgrades to the latest versions, latest and greatest, any updates we have, any extra functionality that's included, plus 24-7 support. Okay, so that's either through physical contact with us and our support teams or through email. Just a couple of the features that we have for the version 11, which is our current version. There was a big presentation, and unfortunately I'm the same as Catherine, I'm, I'm not uh, fluent in uh, Icelandic, but Cortana. We've introduced a Windows function into the Mac world. Okay, so we can, you can utilize Cortana on the Mac. Okay. We've also then, also quick looks for Windows, so in those of you familiar with the Windows environments, the quick looks for document documents in Word, Excel, etc., are available within the Mac. We also introduced a travel mode, which at the moment I'm not connected to the mains, um, so therefore my Mac will uh, think it's in, in, in a travel mode, and it will reduce the services that it's using, the core services. However, if I um, go into a solution that needs those core services, it will, it will fire them up again. So it's just reducing down the amount of power that the Mac is using during that period. Location services uh, through Windows apps, so we have the ability to see where you are. 
You can also turn that off if you want. And Windows 10. With the advent of Windows 10, we've given you the provision to upgrade those virtual environments if you want from your version 7, version 8, 8.1, up to 10 very easily. As I mentioned, there's the centralized IT portal, the, the, the management portal. And you can see an example here of we have the management portal. It gives you core information about the device, the serial number, when it was last used, etc. You can view the licenses, as you can see at the, the top here. We can see with licenses, we've got 50, we've got use three, and then it will give you the remaining uh, um, and the expiry date, etc. So it gives you that easy and quick view of what is in your environment. And that's the way we're pushing our products through the portal. So even the RAS side, you can view your licenses. PMM is going to be, um, the uh, Parallels Mac Management solution is going to be managed. The licenses are going to be managed. You can see the devices through the actual portal itself. We can control those virtual environments. So we can um, allow users full access and create their own virtual environments, or we can pl completely lock it down. And what by that I mean is you can say, OK, I'm not going to allow the user to create any virtual environments. I'm going to encrypt it. I'm going to time bomb it. So for example, if you have a certain project, you have people running uh, on a particular project for six months, and they have certain applications that they want to run on Windows on the Mac, you can actually time bomb it. So after the six months, the virtual environment then cuts off. They do not have access to it at all. Um, and you can manage that through, obviously, the uh, uh, virtual machine control. We've increased, every time we release a product, that, uh, a new version, we increase the uh, performance of the uh, environment. And really, it's all about increasing the battery life, the speed that the Windows boots up, uh, moving files between Windows and, and Mac if you're allowing that to happen. We've increased all that kind of uh, uh, speed. And now, the, the speed at which the Windows environment boots up is, is dramatically increased. The other thing as well is that you can actually automatically boot the Windows environment through Parallels Desktop Business Edition when you boot the Mac up. You don't have to have that. There's flexibility that allows you to do that or to disable it. We've got some advanced features. We, we realized that a lot of uh, applications that um, we did a survey, basically, and a lot of the applications that are, people are using on a Mac through the virtual environment in Windows are development tools. So we've actually added in specific development tool support, which gives you things like, uh, uh, for example, the network card. We can restrict the traffic through the virtual network card. So you can simulate uh, your environment that you're going to be deploying the developed application or developed solution that you're pushing out to your environment. We've also put in um, specific debug tools that are specific for the development uh, applications. And these allow you to test the, the, the development application or environment that you're running through another virtual environment. So you're not actually using the virtual environment you've developed from, you're using another virtual environment through Parallels Desktop Business Edition. We've also added in the, the support for the sharing. And the main area for the development um, solution is really the, the ability to create powerful virtual environments. So 16 CPUs and 64 gig of uh, virtual RAM if you need it. So for those of you who are, uh, are developers in the, in the audience, then this is a great advancement we've put into version 11. And there's an example of the, the, the virtual applications we actually uh, are supported. The main one is Microsoft Visual Studio, which I think you may all be familiar with anyway. And this is how actually the, vir the virtual environment looks. You can see here we've got a Windows environment just running on top of the uh, um, OSX um, operating system. And I'll show you this a bit in a few minutes after we've gone through the presentation. And you can see on the screen in the white, just here, there's the Parallels desktop of, uh, um, application that runs on the Mac. OK, so moving on to the managing Apple devices within your environment. And again, as I said, we have developed a solution for SCCM to allow you to manage the Macs in the same ways as you would your PCs. 
What we find in our experience is, whilst Macs are being introduced into enterprise, and I think Catherine, uh, I'm, I'm right in saying that Apple predict that there's going to be a 40% growth in enterprise with Apple introduced into enterprise organisations. So I think that's quite significant. And what we've aimed at is, most organisations have Windows devices. They know how to manage them. City of Reykjavik, exactly the, the sort of model that, w that we follow. They have SCCM, okay? They can manage their Windows devices, they have all the skill sets. However, they have Macs, and typically the end user is the administrator of that Mac, which is not really good for your organization. You don't have visibility of those devices. Or they may have a third party solution, a standalone solution that they run the Macs on. So that entails then that they need the back-end infrastructure to run that solution. They need the skill sets in that solution to run the support for the Macs. And obviously then they need to maintain that solution. So what we've come up with, as I said, is a solution that allows you to manage your Macs in, in the SCCM environment. And really, we thought, OK, so how are we going to do this? So through SCCM, we can now manage the devices from a discovery and enrollment uh, uh, method. So we'll go out, we'll discover the devices on the environment using um, the, a network discovery, and then we can in install an agent. It's an agent technology. All the solution is completely parallel. So there's nothing from Microsoft that we utilize. The only thing from Microsoft we utilize is SCCM. So once that device is enrolled into the SCCM console, it will sit alongside the Windows devices in collections, which SCCM is great at utilizing. It will then pull back inventory, hardware and software inventory. So, and I think, and Halidor will probably mention this, is that's a great first win. You're able to actually view your Macs in a central, pl central console and have visibility of those Macs. So you can immediately report off what's on it, how's it configured, etc. Secondly, then, we can enforce compliance. And compliance is very important, I think, within organizations. You can do it till the cows come home, as we're saying we have in the UK. You can enforce compliance on your Windows devices through SCCM. We've given you the ability to do that with SCCM for Macs. And we use, Macs have a, a, a component called configuration profiles, but we've, we, we utilize configuration items and configuration baselines within SCCM to enforce that compliance. So things like simple thing, password enforcement. So on your Macs, do you enforce the password as you would do a Windows device? So how long is it? How long's the password? How many special characters does it have? How often is it? Do you have to renew it? We've also got the ability to manage the encryption for Mac. So Firevault is the bit locker of the Windows world. And we're able to actually enforce the encryption for the Mac using, again, configuration items and configuration profiles. And what we've done is we utilize the same wizards that you have within SCCM to manage your Windows devices to manage your Mac devices. Okay? I think that's important as well because we're utilizing the skill sets you, ha you may have for SCCM with your administ SCCM administrators. So even if they don't know or you don't know about Mac OS X or Mac devices, we don't care. If you can push out an agent to an, a, a device on the network, we don't care. It's, it's a Mac or a Windows device through SCCM. And you get visibility of that device back. We also have the ability to deploy out software, again, using SCCM software uh, deployment capabilities. We have the ability to use uh, native software deployment or package deployment. We also have now introduced into our version 4.5, which is the latest version of the Parallels Mac Management Solution for SCCM. The ability, it's up here as patch deployment. Apple guys don't like that patch deployment. It's Apple updates. So it's a special, they, 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 I should really change that to uh, Apple updates. We've also got the self-service application portal for the Mac. So you can publish applications and updates to that portal and the end users can go get them. We've also now introduced native imaging through SCCM, and I'll go through that in a minute, where you can actually take an image of a Mac and deploy it out, exactly like you do for Windows. 
So you take a, you've got a gold image that you actually create an, uh, an image, it uploads it to SCCM, then you can deploy it out. And we use task sequences. For those of you who are familiar with SCCM, there's a functionality called task sequencing, which allows us to push out the image and then do other task sequences functions, for example, join it to the domain, push out software, uh, etc. So we can do that. And again, the most, one of the most important things out of all of this is, OK, we've got all these devices under management in SCCM. We want to report. We want to report off of the, the, the devices. And we can report the information using the native SCCM reporting. So what we've tried to do, in a nutshell, is use SCCM as the framework to manage your Macs as, as, as competently as you would the PCs, or the Windows devices. I must have called them PCs. I get told off. Microsoft have that. OK, so I said Microsoft have a solution. And where is, my, where is our Microsoft man? Close your eyes. We have more red dots, as black dots, as you would imagine. Um, this is a good marketing slide. But the main one I really, really like on this particular um, slide is here. For those of you who understand, if you're using the Microsoft solution, you have to have PKI, PKI infrastructure, basically certificates that you have to have installed to manage the Macs. We provide those certificates for you in our solution. So we're a self-signed certificate solution. So there's no need to have the PKI infrastructure in place. If you have it in place, great, we work. Just a little bit more in-depth techn technology. This is the actual uh, components that comprise the Parallels Mac Management solution. Parallels Proxy, I call it the broker. It's the interface between the SCCM world and the Macs. And it takes information, for example, policies and tasks, from SCCM that are targeted at the collections that you've, you've, you've got in SCCM for the Macs, interprets it, and pushes it down to the Mac to perform, perform those tasks and policies, etc. The Parallels Mac client, the agent. That then obviously will perform the actual tasks on the device itself. And then we have the administration console extensions, which are, and you'll see in a, in a, in a couple of minutes, is the actual extra functionality you need to support a Mac within SCCM. Because Obviously, SCCM being Windows biased, we've had to add in extra functionality for that particular support for Mac uh, devices. 4.5, it's been now a month now, I think. Um, and we're really quite happy with the, 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 the extra functionality we've added in. So we've added in um, patch management, Apple updates, OK. We've got more tighter integration with Active Directory, so if Macs are in Active Directory, we can actually see them. We can actually then use that Active Directory uh, solution to push out the agent. Logged on users, this was one of our key, everyone kept on saying, I want to know how long the user's been logged in or how often they're logging in and how often they're using their Mac. Client updates, yeah, that's a no-brainer. We've just added that one in. But one of the biggest ones was the actual native imaging capabilities of of the solution through SCCM. Before, you had to have an external source. You had to actually create manually uh, an image and then upload it to SCCM. Now, it's through task sequencing, as I said. So it's the gold image creation of Windows World. We've introduced that into Mac. And here's some of the examples, uh, um, some screenshots that we've, well, I've prepared. So this is the OSX patch management. All we've done is added in, in the software update uh, solution is at the top there, you can see we've added in the Apple uh, component. So once you install the solution, you get this capability. We then use the uh, configuration manager, all the software updates are, update, uh, are uploaded into the update folder. So you can see here we've got the Mac Apple updates, and they appear in the actual SCCM console itself. We then can actually create a software update group so you can group together the updates you want to target with your Mac and then target at the collection that you want to point it at. Okay, so it's, hopefully we've made it as simple. And the idea is that we have made, tried to make it as simple as possible so that, <coughs> as I said before, you may not be, uh, have the, the, the real skill sets for managing Apple or, or understanding Macs, but we've made it as easy as possible to use SCCM with a, a deployment methodology to target the max. Active Directory so system support, so we just add in our um, 
solution into the Active Directory system pro uh, properties, just like you do for PCs. And that will then obviously target the devices. You're able to then uh, target the device there. We can push the actual agent out using the push technology. And then we get back the uh, information from the actual device itself. So if we get look at the properties of the device, we can see we've actually got the fully qualified domain name and the actual client version, etc., that is running on it. This is, this, is, uh, this is what I like, the, the, the actual capture of the image where we can actually run a task sequence. It will then target the devices. We can see there where we're going to store the image itself and then obviously the credentials that we're going to use to actually create that image. And once we've done that, we can see here, there's our uh, image uh, and it's a native DMG. We actually utilize... Um, WIM technology, which SCCM understands, we convert the DMG into WIM in the background, but you can see it actually displays it as a .DMG, which is a native uh, Mac format, and we use the uh, task sequencing capabilities for the update of the client, quite simply. When we bring out a new version, you can automatically update the client. You can turn this off, because some organizations obviously want that you and I'm a firm believer that you should test things before you actually deploy them out en masse, so you can turn that off. Reporting the logged on user, again, telling you how often the user's logged in, etc. and again, giving you the, full, the, the, the network capabilities as well, so which network um, users are logging onto the device as well. And really, just to finish up before we go into sort of a, a practical demo, the real sort of takeaways I think I, I like to give people is that you can support your Macs in your environment using the infrastructure you already have. A lot of organizations have taken a lot of time, spent a lot of money uh, on their SCCM environment. It does what, it, what they want it to do for Windows, but we can extend that to actually manage your Macs in your environment. So we're using the existing SCCM infrastructure. We're using your existing skill sets within your environment and the, 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 the skill sets that your organization has within the admin teams. And what that allows you to do, and really the deployment of this, and I think Halidol hopefully will reflect that, there is a qu it's quite quick to deploy. So your return on investment. When an organization makes an investment in any piece of software or any technology, the business wants to see a return on that investment. And really, what we've tried to do is make it as quick as possible. Once you've made any investment and a commitment to go with Parallels Mac Management for SCCM, we, we want you to be successful and report back to the business quickly the information that is needed for those uh, Mac devices. So, as I said earlier, inventory. We want to know how many we've got, what's out there, what's on it. So, therefore, reducing the return on investment, what I'm trying to say, is, is very quick with, uh, with the Parallels Mac Management. And I've had instances where we've had it up and running in a couple of hours, deploying out the agents to the Macs. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is just run through a, a quick uh, demonstration. And what I'll do, I'm actually running, obviously, a Mac, as you would expect. And here we go. I do like this picture. And I'm running here my Parallels desktop environment. And you can see I've got uh, various... Um, virtual environments, I've got, my, I've got my Windows RAS servers, which is the Parallels RAS, I've got some uh, uh, um, OSX running, I've got my uh, SCCM server as well. And if I just click on my SCCM server here, I can actually go in and I can go into full screen here. So this will then pull it into full screen. <coughs> so I'm actually looking at, hopefully those of you that are familiar with SCCM. However, I can just quickly switch between Mac and Windows World. Okay? So therefore, I'm just using my four fingers here, switching between backwards and forwards. Okay? I can also, he says, there we go, if I just go into my view again, I can exit full screen, and I can enter, uh, enter what we call coherence mode, which is basically all about allowing the users to run Windows applications, but not view the Windows environment. So it hides the Windows environment from you. And I can also then go in and configure certain components of the actual uh, Parallels desktop. So if I go in here 
and I go to my preferences. Again, I'm not going to go into every single little detail here. Uh, we can see here I've got my general settings. So where am I going to store all my um, virtual environments? I can then go into my shortcuts. So we can actually use, you can configure shortcuts that you would use in Windows to actually run on Mac. I can look at my devices. I can connect it, uh, if, connect it to my Mac and share it with my virtual environment. I've got the security, so do I allow the users to create a virtual environment or do I require a password? Uh, removing virtual environments, cloning. We have the ability as well through the virtual environment to, let me just uh, go back here, to actually create snapshots. Okay? So if you're going to be doing some testing, you can create a, a, a snapshot before you do that and revert back to the actual sna snapshot if you want. We also have the ability to create cl cl clone the virtual environment. So you can actually take a complete um, copy of it um, rather than a snapshot. And on the virtual environment itself, obviously, we can uh, look at the, 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 the disk space. We can uh, go in. We can look at the uh, various components. There's the development, as I said. So we can actually start an SSH setting. We can go in and start debugging. We can generate a core dump and then actually try and test the environment within the actual uh, uh, virtual environment. We've got the ability as well to uh, look at various devices, various uh, uh, actions. We can configure this virtual environment as well. So we can go in. We can allocate various CPU and memory. Uh, we can look at the boot order. Uh, we can configure network cards. We can actually add in network cards if we wanted to. We've got various shares we can use there as well. So quite a, a, a powerful uh, uh, solution that allows you to create um, all your virtual environments and run them. So moving on to the actual uh, Parallels Mac management solution. If I just make this full size, then we can uh, see it a bit better. Here we have our devices. Um, we utilize the collection capabilities of SCCM. So we do create a default collection. So if I just go to my device collections here, you can see here we've got our Macs in our Mac OS X uh, collection. And if I just uh, right click on one, we can see here we've added in the various functionality. I forgot to mention there is a um, remote control capabilities through VNC for the Mac as well. Um, we can actually then uh, do other, perform other uh, uh, functions on the Mac. We can do a, a machine policy retrieval, so that's kick-starting the agency if there's any uh, tasks to run, and send problem reports. So we can gather up all the logs that allow us to view the logs and send them up to the SCCM console. So as an administrator, we can view anything that's going on on the Mac. And in terms of inventory, as I mentioned, we view the inventory in the same way as you would for a, 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 a Windows device. And you can see here we've got things like the computer system, it gives you the, the name, the, 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 the caption, the time zone it's in, all that good stuff, the IP address, etc. Um, again, I'm not going to go in right into it, but it, this is the standard inventory you're getting back through using Parallels Mac Management uh, or SCCM. How we actually get that information back is through the actual deployment. Okay, so we have the deployment, and at the bottom here you can see we've added in a deployment. We've got the Mac client environment, which is actually the agent. And there's the agent. We can use that. You can deploy that agent out using either our discovery or whichever method you deploy agent technology out. We have the discovery method, which is actually here. We can see we've got the various. You can enable or disable it. We can look at the accounts that we're going to use. And we can have the integration with Active Directory. So you can actually go in and we can view the Active Directory uh, uh, collections. Uh, we can look at the accounts, so we can add in the actual account itself. So we can specify the accounts. We click OK. Boundaries, we utilize boundaries within the environment. So if you've got boundaries set up for SCCM, we can utilize those as well. And various, we can use subnets. And obviously, you can schedule that to actually run at various times. And again, we're utilizing SCCM's strong capabilities for deploying out to Windows devices for the Mac and utilizing the same wizards that you would expect to find within uh, SCCM. The compliance side is all through the compliance settings. So we have configuration items here. 
And we've added in a drop down here so we can actually look at the Mac OS X and various components I mentioned earlier, the configuration profiles that, we, that Mac uses to configure itself. Here's an example of uh, the password um, uh, profile where you're setting the, the length of the password, etc. We can actually specify networks so we can say, okay, this particular device is going to be connected to a particular um, uh, uh, connected to a particular Wi-Fi and the actual connection details that it needs. And once we've actually created those, they will appear as <coughs> configuration items within SCCM. The other uh, components we've got on here is we can actually import the configuration profile from a file. There's the firewall en encryption capabilities. There's also the management for the Parallels Desktop Business Edition. Okay, so. From SCCM, we can utilize the um, capabilities to manage the actual application and push it out to the devices. So here we can see the components. Again, I'm not going to go deep into it. And then finally, we've got the virtual machine configuration. So this is where we can configure all that good stuff. We're going to set the amount of CPU, the amount of RAM to that virtual environment. And then we can push those out to the, the, the actual devices. And the way we do that is the same you would expect to do for Windows devices through configuration baselines. And I've got a couple here. There's a, we can actually use scripts as well. So if you have scripts that you want to change the wallpaper, you want to set printers up, devices, you can utilize those. And we utilize, again, SCCM's deployment capabilities. So we just tar target here a collection within SCCM. And the device collections. We target them, we then set a schedule, and we can deploy those out. The other components of the solution are through, obviously, I mentioned application deployment, and we're using native app, uh, application deployment. We can see here, if I just go into my, I've segregated them out, we can actually then import in, we can create, again, I'm not going to go right into all this. We actually then, okay, we select Microsoft, uh, Mac OS X, and then we can use the existing uh, creation application deployment wizard to deploy out that application. And once we've created it, we can deploy it out to our environment again, utilizing the collections that we have in our environment. Again, I'm not going to walk all the way through, but you can see here, we can look at it. It's, it's, the exist it's the same as we would expect. I've already got one deployed, so I did that yesterday. So I need to deploy it. Uh, did, did delete that deployment, but we can view the deployments here. So whilst we've deployed that out to our environment, we can actually um, look at how that deployment is going. Exactly the same as you would expect um, as you're deploying out to Windows, we can do that for Mac. And we also have the packages here. So if I just look here, I look at my OS X. I've actually got some configuration management updates, so the SCCM updates. I can view the actual Chrome deployment here. Again, we can create the packages using the standard wizards. I'll deploy this out. If I go again to my collections, I go to next, next, next. And again, you can see that this is all um, starting to look and feel as though it's a Windows deployment. So although it's a Mac package being deployed out, it's a Windows uh, methodology technology pushing it out to the Mac. The final two components that really I'd like to look at the, this morning is in the operating system deployment. So we have task sequences, as we mentioned before. And if I want to create a, an image, we have here, there we go, we capture an OSX image. There's the, the name of the image. We just put in whatever name you want. We can then select a network path and the account that's actually going to be used to, to, to create that image. Okay. And once we've created that, it's actually uploaded to the SCCM infrastructure or to the solution. And here we have one. I've got an image deployment. And we can deploy that out, or we can actually edit the task sequence. So we can go in. We can edit the task sequence here. You can see we've got things like set the host name. We can join it to the domain. So we've added in the domain credentials. And we can add in a bit of software here. Again, we can add in, if I'm going to do another one, I'm going to in, I could install some extra software. So you can actually deploy out more than one uh, software deployment to this particular deployment through using task sequences. And if we wanted to deploy this out, we would then use the same deployment methods as we saw for the actual 
software deployment, and the same kind of wizard, um, scheduling, the user experience, any alerts you want to display, distribution points, and then a summary. I'm not going to deploy it out because I don't want to, to deploy it out to my Mac uh, right now um, because it takes a little bit of time, but, um, and I don't want to destroy my Mac. So we can actually uh, uh, deploy that out. So really, that's kind of what we're about. We're all about looking after Macs in terms of running Windows on a Mac and using the capabilities that Windows has, the likes of Cortana, um, sharing files between Macs, etc. We also then have the ability to manage the Macs through Parallels Mac Management Solution for SCCM. Any questions? Any questions for Pat at this point on the technical side? No. Okay, how are we doing for time? Just a quick... Okay, cool. I'd like to invite uh, Halidor up and to join us this morning uh, from City of Reykjavik, one of our deployments from last year, in fact our best deployments here in Iceland. Uh, we've just got a few questions we'd like to run through to really give you a live example of how the parallel solution has helped in, in a network infrastructure in managing those Macs alongside the Windows PCs. So Pat, if you'd like to ask the questions and I'll okay. give you the... <laughs> okay, right. thank you. Hello, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, just wanted to ask a few questions about the reasons you chose Parallels and what, um, how you uh, deployed it out. But can you give us an idea of your infrastructure, first of all, of how your environment is structured within the city of Reykjavik? Yeah, well, it's a very big network, and uh, we have uh, very, very, many, very many PCs. Uh, okay. And, uh, how, how many PCs, roughly? Uh, sort of roughly 9,000. 9,000 PCs, yeah, and yeah. how many Macs? About uh, 100, 200. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And what was your challenge with those Macs? In uh, I guess you're coming from a Windows-centric background environment. Mm -hmm. What were the challenges that you had with the Macs? Well, uh, we had no idea about them. They, they were just running in the wild, so so they were not uh, something we could uh, we couldn't deploy anything on them. We couldn't uh, manage them. We couldn't see what. So you had no visibility of those Macs whatsoever yeah, yeah. in the environment. Yeah. Okay. And what was the reason you looked at parallels? And the reason that you made well, those parallels? We are using SCCM. Okay. So it was a very logical choice to, to use the parallels uh, PMM. Okay. A, because uh, the other solutions are mainly Mac server based, and uh, that is uh, something we didn't find. Uh, appealing to have another okay. environment. So was there any other solution that you looked at, or was it just because you have SCCM yeah. that you looked the at SCCM the parallels? SCCM is our, our uh, heart. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we want to have it in, in that. So your, your expertise within the organization is all about Windows devices through SCCM, and you felt that the parallel solution would give you an extension to allow you to manage the Macs? Yes, okay. certainly. Okay. And what was the sort of main... Was it what, what by choosing parallels? What did you gain from that solution that allowed you to? Did it give you visibility of the Macs? Did it give you what? Did it give you? Yeah, that you yeah. Didn't have? We we now see the Macs. We we can do in, inventory and and deploy everything, and they're just like uh, a PC in the okay. network now. Okay. Yeah. And what was your knowledge of Macs before you introduced parallels? Was it was it? on a scale of 1 to 10, I guess. Uh, myself, I, I, I don't... Um, you, you mean my visibility of operating systems? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, open for every operating okay. system, so I'm not a uh, prejudice <laughs> in any way. <laughs> no, and also, I guess your knowledge of Macs wasn't that... Obviously, Windows is the core that you Yeah, my, my knowledge of Macs is, is the same as Windows, so, okay. so okay. that's no problem. And once you've chosen the, the, the parallel solution, how did the implementation, could you just sort of take us through the steps that how you actually approached deploying out the actual solution itself? Yeah, so we, do you have a we, test environment? We, we, yes, we, st we started with a very uh, closed network okay. and uh, tried everything on that closed network. Uh, all, we had test servers and everything. Mm -hmm. So we, we didn't want to... Uh, deploy it in the real environment before we saw it working. Yep, yeah, so, sure. 
And then yeah. how long was that period that you sort of you, you tested it for? Can you, can you remember? Yes, yeah, it was about a month. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, you were, you were satisfied that the solution would give you what yes. it wanted. Yes. Um, and so currently now it's deployed out to your environment. Um, are your Macs... Uh, so are your Macs distributed across the organization? Is it just... Yeah, they're, they're uh, all over the place. So, okay. Yeah. And remote as well? Do we have remote um, people, uh, support? So uh, people working from home, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah we, yes, yes, we, we take uh, our remote. Okay, and, okay. Yeah. and so you've actually, how long have you had the, uh, the, the Parallels Mac Management deployed for in your environment? Uh, yeah, it's about two months. Two yeah. months, okay. Yeah. okay. And that's giving you the, the necessary information back from those Macs so you can report mm. to the business. Yes. Was that the mm. important thing that you had to give the business visibility and yourself as an IT administrator, you had the visibility of those Macs as well and had the control? Yeah. So yeah. they were, they were they, the, the Macs before you had in, implemented Parallels Mac Management, they weren't under control? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. And if you had a, a sort of one sentence that you could give the good people about parallels. Well, everything we we we, we accept. We're not. It's a soft piece of software that is very powerful. But like with all software, there's all um, parts of it that could be improved. Just in a sentence, what's your experience in working with parallels, and how have you found us as an organisation to be working with? Yeah, I'm very pleased with working with parallels because um, the support you have given us is very good, and. Um, uh, the solution is uh, a stable one, and okay. I'm very happy about it. Okay. Yes. Okay. And that wasn't Halidor didn't know I was going to ask that question. By the way, <laughs> we haven't paid him to do that, say that. But oh. um, well, thank you, Halidor. Thanks very much. I thank hope. You. I think it's important that we have people that can talk about parallels. I mean, I can stand up here, talk about it with technology, etc., and display and show you all this good stuff and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But real life experiences, you, you, it's just a, a great uh, advocate for parallels. And thank you, Halidor, for that, um, for, for allow, allowing us to uh, uh, have that conversation. OK, I think that's all we have to share with you this morning. Uh, any questions from the floor? Any feedback, observations? This is your opportunity. We are around afterwards as well. So that's right. You don't want to ask a question, or you have some, think of something when we 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 finish. When it, now we've finished, please um, come and talk to us. If not, please, please speak to the good guys and thank you for our hosts today. Um, you, they, are, they are our main partner, partner. within yep. Iceland. Um, and again, thank you very much for allowing me to visit your lovely. And I love the snow. We've not had snow this year in London, so I'm loving it. <laughs> I know you guys probably aren't, but I Yeah, I, I can't am. believe it's nearly your summer and you've got <laughs> snow on the ground. That's brilliant. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed breakfast. On, uh, and again, courtesy of our hosts, um, thank you very much. Yeah, we talk about parallel filler, and we're just going to end on the and I hope that's just fine. Eh, hérna, er spurning hvort ég hvet ykkur ekki enn og aftur að koma með we used to have a solution that supported iOS. Mm -hmm. However, because we use SCCM yes. and Microsoft have Intune, we have decided not to get into that. And there are other organisations that support iOS. Mm -hmm. If we got into that now, we'd be late to the RT if you want. So we just concentrate. We're just concentrating on Mac OS X through SCCM. And we partner with Microsoft, I didn't mention this, but we have close relationships with Microsoft as well as Apple, as you would expect, because Microsoft love us because 
if you've got Macs, they can get more licenses for management of the devices <laughs> and hopefully Windows as well, so they get another license. Apple love us because we can support Macs in enterprise. So Apple, we, we sort of got f f feet in both camps. When I first started at Parallels, I thought Apple and, and Microsoft were like, like this. However, they have become closer together because I think they realise that they can coexist with, it, with each other. Thank you. Þetta er Guðmundur í tilbúin og það er akkurat það sem hann ætlar að fara og kynna fyrir okkur. Hvernig við notum Sister Center og Intune til þess að sjá um næst hérna hinn Apple-tækin. Gjörðu svo velkomin. Já, góðan daginn, heyrðu stímið eitthvað. Hérna, gleðilegt næstu því sumar í hérna, það er nú úti séð. Hérna, ég ætla aðeins að fara bara stutt yfir System Center og Intune samtenginguna, hvernig hún lítur út. Í dag erum við kannski að horfa á heiminn svolítið, sem sagt, þetta er orðið notendaheimur. Nú er notandinn, hann er með fullt af tækjum, á tækjunum er keirandi fullt af öppum og öll öppin er að safna upplýsingum og nota upplýsingar. Og þannig að við erum komin í þetta people-centric IT, þannig að fólkið, notandinn, er í miðjunni á IT. Þetta er ekki lengur tölvudeldin sem ákveður hvað á að nota, heldur það er notandinn sem ákveður. En með þessu koma vandamál og ekki vandamál heldur sem sagt áskoranir og við þurfum að geta manið sér að þetta, við þurfum að geta stjórna þessu. Þú veist, við þurfum að leifa notandanum í raun og við erum að geta gert það sem þið vilja en við viljum líka hafa sem sagt stjórn á sem sagt umhverfin okkar og gögnunum okkar. Við ekki höfum í til dæmis þarna tvo kosti. Við getum verið með Windows in Tune eitt og sér. Það hefur ákveðna stjórn á tækjum Það er skalanlegt upp í flest íslensk fyrirtæki, 7000 tæki, 4000 notendur. En hérna, við erum ekki með dreifa stýrikerfum eða eins mikla stjórn og tækjum eins og við erum með í SSM. En ef við setjum SSM og Intune, eða tengjum Intune inn í SSM, þá erum við komið með inn í sama umhverfið, sem sagt bæði tölvur og mobile tæki, sama hvað nafnið það heita. Í hérna, sem sagt, í gegnum þennan aðeinn konsól með SSM og Intune, þá einmitt erum við komið með alla svítuna af tækjum. Og það sem parallel gerir sér að það dýfkar einfaldlega bara Mac OS X getuna í SSM. Það er sem sagt, hérna, það sem Intune kemur með inn í pakkan er raun og eru mannismentið eða MDM hlutin af fyrir þráðlausu síma á tæki og tæki sem er ekki hluti af dóminni. Ok, stöðningu við tæki, það er allavega þess að bara allavega fullu stöðningu frá Windows 7 og upp úr Alltaf því meira, því lengra sem við förum, en nýrri stýrikerfi, því betri stöðningur, en stöðningur við Android, EOS, alveg upp í nýju, þannig að það er mjög fljótt. Við minnir að hafa verið innan tveggja vikna frá því að EOS nýju kom út þangu til að hafa komið plöggin fyrir SSM. Já, og í gegnum þetta getum við sem sagt Húsað út á tækin, veist, Wi-Fi prófilum, við getum mert tækin, sem sagt, við getum stjórnað, eða púsað öppum, leift nótendum að velja öpp og svo framvegis. En hvað þarf til? Við þurfum að búa okkur til account í Windows Intune, við þurfum að setja inn DNS-fæslur, við þurfum að láta nótendum nota UPN loginið sitt, þannig að loggast inn eins og e-mail-adressan, 
Við að setja upp ATFS, Territory Synchronization upp í Office 365 eða Intune og tengja Intune og Configuration Manageri saman. En í það sem gerist í raun og veru er að eftir við tengjum þetta saman þá notum við fyrst og fremst SSM-inn til að stýra þessu. Mikið af því sem er í bakendanum er falið fyrir okkur. Og við höfum valkost í byrjun, viljum nota Intune eitt og sér eða viljum tengja það. Við getum ekki bakka til baka en ef við með því að hafa sambandi tax support og byrja þá um að breyta fyrir okkur. En dæmi um hvað við getum gert, við erum með hérna policyur, policyurinn getum við gert kröfu um leift eða bannað backup, við getum stjórnað sem sagt hérna tæmótum, kröfum líkilorð, dulkóðun, við getum stjórnað það gert kröfur á tækin og það sem gerist er að um leið og notandi logga sig inn í hérna, logga sig inn eða skráið tæki sitt, getur verið að logga sig bara inn í póstin sinn, þá kemur policyja sem segir, heyrðu, þú þarft að instalera, hérna, þú þarft að uppfylla þessa policyja, þú vilt þú póstið inn, það kemur sem sagt instal á þau forrið sem við erum búin að bæta við, sem notandinn á að fá, til dæmis ondræði, forrið sem notandinn er með fyrir, það gæti komið reinstal vegna þess að við erum með annarkvart nýri útgáfu, eða þá við þurfum að setja þetta upp á annan hátt fyrir tryggja öryggið. Við getum listað upp hérna, fáum sem sagt, í policyinn erum við með sem sagt stillingar á til dæmis lámast lengd, líkilorðs, hérna, inactivity time, þú veist hversu lengi má iPadinn eða síminn úr opinn á þannig að læsist, hvaða upp ætlum að senda á hann, Og þegar notandinn, sem sagt, eftir það þá verður hún færð notandinn bara kröfum pinnum mér og það kemur melding á tækið að tækið sem annars bæði og kompani. Þannig að við erum komið með fulla stjórn og tæki sem þeim enga stjórn og rétt áður. Og kostur við þetta að við getum þar með haft betri og í ríkari stjórn og okkar lausnum eða okkar gögnum. Það sem gerist við þetta er að við fáum svona 60% stjórni við tækinu sjálfu. 40%-inn er það sem notandi ræður alveg sjálfur. En við fáum að stjórna því að sem sagt við getum vipa eða þurrkað út fyrirtæki upplýsingar úr tækinu án þess að snerta prívat upplýsingar notandans. Þannig að myndir, ljósmyndir og allt þetta sem í enga póstinum, það verður eftir á tækinu fyrirtækja pósturinn, fyrirtækja gögnin, þau höfum við stjórn á. Við getum sett policyu sem bann okkur að kópera úr fyrirtækja pósturinn yfir í okkar eigin póst, milli fyrirtækja Twittersins og engar Twittersins og svo framvegis. En við höfum fulla stjórn á öppum, hvort það eru company öpp eða personal öpp. En þetta er, raun og veru mjög, það tekur, það er stutt, ef maður er sérstaklega maður er með tengingu við skíðið í dag, þá er þetta mjög stutt duttu tími að tengja þetta saman ef annars þá er bara að setja upp tengingu við skíðið og við erum back in business en já, ég var ekki með meira einhverja spurninga kannski